Andrew Tay has quickly become an internet idol and the most Google man in the world. But just a couple years back, most people didn't even know his name. So what did the guy do to literally blow up on the internet? So much so that he became the talk of the town. Today, we'll try to understand Andrew Tay and not just the bad, but also the good part of his journey. Make sure you stay with us to the very end. Here on your come up, we talk about all topics to help you come up. Business, finance, personal, spiritual, and physical. It's not like Andrew Tate was a regular person even before his controversies because he had a very glorious career in kickboxing. He was also a reality star and a TV icon before he became a podcast hero and everyone wanted him on their live streams. For the longest time, Tate also gave career coachings and some people also describe him as a motivational speaker. Your future and the life that is laid out for you is nothing but depressing. You're going to go to school, you're going to get in debt, you're going to get a job, you're going to get a wife, divorce is coming, you're going to lose the house eventually, your job's shit, inflation's outpacing your wages, you're going to work, 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 no one's going to appreciate it, now you're old and your life's over. That is the matrix for 99% of men. He also has a fully fledged training program that has allegedly trained over 110,000 people in just one year. But before Andrew became a famous kickboxer and an internet sensation with a net worth of over $350 million, yo man, don't be stingy, give me some of that. <laughs> just kidding. He was also a regular guy born into a middle class Christian family. His mother put him in a self defense class, and as a result, he got immense speed and strength that was very unique for fighters of that time. He eventually rose to fame and started giving interviews, but that's when things went a different direction for him. His opinions about things and everything he said somehow was offensive for people and it really made him go viral. The good thing about Andrew is that he knows how to sell. Millions of people hate him, but there are millions of people who also follow him like an idol and his content is particularly for those people. He has successfully resonated with a lot of people on the internet and a lot of internet experts say that Andrew says offensive things to go viral. And there really is no second opinion on how much he has earned from saying some of the worst things ever in their opinion. I mean, he says some things that are out there, but he just knows what's gonna get him the most views. And then he goes on and says the things and he goes viral. It tells us a lot about the new way of getting quick fame because no matter what people say, Andrew is literally on top right now. We could actually analyze his marketing strategy and then apply it to our lives. First, he talks about things that people find very relatable because they thought about them at some point. He triggers our male ego and then offers him courses to be more like him. And yeah, people are obviously going to buy his courses because they want to be like Andrew Tate. Speaking of buying, I'm an author of four books, link in description. That was kind of cringe, I suppose, but let's get back into the content. This, attending podcasts, and selling courses was going great until a few clips of him saying some of the worst possible things about women went online. It literally blew up the internet, and within a few minutes, he got canceled. The man who was a youth icon was now the center of all criticism only because his content resonated with a certain group of men. As a result, his Twitter and Instagram accounts were banned because of hate speech and he had millions of followers on these platforms. Losing these accounts obviously cost him quite a lot because he was earning pretty well from the brand deals and collaboration. But his most famous medium of communicating with people was podcasts and live streams. He continued to attend live shows of different influencers on YouTube and other platforms. The nature of his offensive comments didn't really change. He said in an interview that he saw a woman taking a U-turn and immediately thought to himself why they allow women to drive. But that's the least problematic of his comments because he also went on by saying that victims of sexual violence should also bear some responsibility for it. And that could be interpreted as the worst kind of victim blaming and people who follow Tate for a while immediately saw how toxic that was. And it's a touchy subject. He also said once that he lives in Romania because corruption is far more accessible and he could break any law and get away with it by buying off cops. The downward trajectory of Andrew Tate continued as even he called women the possession of men in one of his interviews. But the most criticism he received was when he said that depression is not a thing and people who are depressed are just cowards who can't face the situations. However, guess what? Some people still agree with him by hiding behind freedom of speech. There are a lot of diehard fans of Andrew who still love him because he shows them what the real world is like. It's cruel and nothing's going to go according to you. He has said things like you don't have to spend a whole lot of money on clothes of your children or even on your own clothes. He said if you're getting bored, do some push-ups, lift some weights and that's it. In a weird way, I see value in that. These saints hit all the right spots for a lot of people because they're tailored specifically for misogynistic and traditional men. He also made a lot of homophobic and racist comments in the past, which has pissed off a lot of Gen Z. However, he still has millions of followers, so that's gotta mean something, right? 
but his controversies hit the roof when a video of him went viral in which he was threatening to hit a woman with a belt. People on the internet were saying that they knew Andrew was an abuser and that the woman should be provided with justice. Andrew, on the other hand, just knocked it all off like no big deal by saying that the woman was his friend and he was just joking about it. Besides, Andrew has a very strong personality and he talks with a lot of confidence that sort of makes him look like an alpha male and men follow him mainly because they want to be alpha like him. Andrew is also leaving his mark on fellow streamers like Brit Greek Goddix, who was recently banned from Twitch for misogynistic remarks and people are saying that he's a huge fan of Tate. The point is that people are now using the marketing strategy of Andrew to go viral and it's actually working quite well for them in terms of gaining views and exposure. The good side of Andrew is reflected by the tweets of Gross Gore, a streamer from the UK who said that Andrew has helped him get over a very depressive phase and his videos helped him stay on track. As Andrew said, he thinks that depression is not even a thing. It's all in his head. It's not something that's cured with the pill. His followers also like the fact that he doesn't sugarcoat anything and says things as they are. He has said multiple times that everyone is alone in this world and if you want to achieve something, you got to do it all by yourself because relying on other people will be the biggest mistake. Hey, you know, you got to have faith, man. Faith without works is dead. His views goes against the values of not just love, but also empathy and brotherhood, but they're holy grail for people who've been alone all their lives. It makes them think that they're doing something right and there's someone out there who understands them. Tate has said multiple times that he gets a whole lot of hate for his views, but he continues to say what's truth, although his family is at risk. So he not just targets the practical side of his followers, but also the emotional side. People on the internet are saying that if you want to stop the craze of Andrew Tate, then you should just simply stop watching his videos and stop talking about him. When he passes remarks like this, it goes viral and people watching his videos gets him what he wants. Hey, attention, exposure and attention on his businesses too. His handful of loyal followers can't make him go viral overnight. It's the people who criticize him. Their views and comments made him into an internet sensation. So if we simply stop watching his videos, he won't be such a big deal anymore with a few thousand views. But then again, there's always controversy and someone's going to spare it and share it. And that's what goes. Hey is also a big deal in the finance industry as he has invested in multiple businesses and has earned quite a fortune. So he gives financial tips to his followers, to which has made him even more famous. But all the good he does can't really hide the fact that he has said and done some of the most horrible things you can imagine. He tries to portray himself as a cool playboy, but in reality, He's nothing more than a misogynistic opportunist, according to the people on the internet. My personal opinion is different. I think he has a lot of value to offer. Some of the things he says I may not agree with, but I think overall he has a lot of value to offer. So what are your thoughts about Andrew Tate? Do you think he's salvageable? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Nathan. Hatt. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.